All right. Hello, Nidra friends. Um, thank you for being here. It's a cool way to connect via Zoom. And this is a yin and yoga nidra. And some of you are new to me, so I'll do a little bit of a structure breakdown. The first half is yin postures, 20, 25 minutes of yin postures. Then we take a little bit of a break if anybody has to use the restroom or grab a sip of water, fidget. And then we go into the nidra, which is a guided meditation. And one of the quintessential things about yoga nidra is you set a sankalpa, mm -hmm. and a sankalpa is a present tense intention. And you say it in the present tense like it already exists. So then after the class is over, you can make decisions in alignment with that choice. And yeah, I guess I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, Jangle here is going to be practicing throughout class and I will kind of just guide us through things. So we'll go ahead and get started today. And I'll go through the yin side of class in the first yin posture. So we'll start in child's pose, balasana, bringing the soles of the feet to touch. Knees are extended or together, arms out long in front of you, or they can be at your sides too. And just taking a moment right now to acknowledge transition. A lot of us have been spending a lot of time in the same space. So acknowledging this space now as a place where you'll practice yoga and taking in any external sounds and arriving. And I'll go a little bit into the yin side of class here. So energetically, yin is receptivity, it's allowing, it's yielding, and it's also the opposite of yang. So yang is very active, it's motion, it's solar, and yin is gonna be all the opposite. And I've been teaching yin for a year or so or more, and every time I teach, I always feel like I have to justify the rest and the regeneration for everyone because we're so hardwired to, to go and hustle and check off all the boxes on the to-do list. And right now we really are in a period where we're being encouraged to rest and regenerate. So really allowing that to be a part of your practice today and tapping into that energetically. In terms of anatomy and physiology, Yin stresses and compresses the connective tissue, the fascia, the ligaments, the bones, and the joints. And fascia, you can kind of picture fascia, like if you imagine an orange or a clementine, the skin to be like our skin. And the fascia is like the white fuzzy layer underneath. And we cannot stretch our connective tissue, our fascia, um, definitely don't want to stretch the bones. You have to access them in a different way, which is through the stress and the compression. And which is what we will do with these long holds. And there are three truths, three tattvas to this practice, kind of pillars. And the first is to meet your edge, which you've likely already found. And it's always a gentle edge, maybe 70% of where you would go in a more rigorous vinyasa class, because we're gonna be staying there for time and it needs to be sustainable. And so the first one is to meet the gentle edge. The second one is to be still. And if there are two reasons in which you would move, the first is if you're experiencing any pain and pain can be a sharp sensation, it can be a stabbing sensation or an electrical sensation. We don't wanna experience any pain in our yin practice. So if you're experiencing any pain, move out of it, back a little bit off. And we even wanna avoid tingling because excessive tingling or repetitive tingling could cause nerve damage. So if you're experiencing any of those things, just backing out and adjusting. There's a chat box open. I'll keep my eye on it. If you have any questions, um, I can always go over and try to give you some feedback. And then the third thing is to hold for time. 
and I keep track of time on my phone. So if you see me looking at it, I'm absolutely not texting. I'm just gonna be using it as my timer and I'll give a halfway mark and a final minute for all of the postures. And I guess the only other things that I'll say is treat yourself with compassion and kindness in stillness. When we give ourselves the space to be still, sometimes that's when the mind is the most loud. So being gentle and soft with your words in the narrative. And then lastly, when you do come up and out of the hold, sometimes the bones and the joints feel super creaky. It may feel like you fast forwarded like 80 years into the future. That's super normal. They're going to bounce back very quickly. This isn't a traditional yin class, so we won't be getting to a, a bunch of postures. And I do like to practice yin mostly in silence. So I won't be talking much more for the other postures moving into class. And gently over the next few breaths, moving with intention and awareness, coming into a tabletop, stacking the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees. Finding a sense of spinal neutrality, crown of the head forward, tailbone back. Noticing the palms of your hands on the mat, knees. And we'll flow through a few rounds of cat and cow just to kind of wake up the spine, flexion and extension. Inhale, cow pose, drop the belly, lift the gaze. And exhale, cat pose, rounding, doming, tucking. And inhale, cow pose, chest up, tail up. And exhale, cat, pressing the palms into the mat, rounding, doming, tucking. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. You can add any additional movement if you'd like. And then over the next three breaths or so, we'll meet back in a neutral table. And the next posture we're going to work into is melting heart or anahata asana or puppy dog. And for this posture, go ahead and walk the forearms forward until either the forehead meets the mat or the chin meets the mat. Hips are stacked over the knees. And just taking a moment to be sensitive to your edge. We're going to be here for three minutes. So not a super long hold, but plenty long for the intensity or the sensations that might arise in the shoulders. You can always put a pillow under the forearms if it feels like too much intensity. And turning to the breath, noticing the intake of oxygen, the expanding of the diaphragm, the lungs, the ribs. And the deflation, the emptying sensation, just noticing the natural rise and fall of the breath. As somewhere to tether your awareness in this experience. And when the mind wanders, which surely it will, trying to bring it back to the experience, knowing you don't have to plan for what you're going to eat after this or what you're going to queue up on Netflix or planning about tomorrow. So coming back to the moment and giving yourself this hour to practice yin and all the energetic qualities associated with it. And we are at the halfway mark.
and final minute. And giving yourself the space to just be here. You don't have to identify with what the mind thinks. And there's just another few seconds here. And then gently, if you want to actively press the palms into the mat, into the floor, walk the forearms back to meet your knees, coming into a neutral table. It might feel good to hood and shrug the shoulders, kind of shake that out. Any natural, organic, counterintuitive movement that feels appropriate, extending the arm out or taking circles, whatever feels good in the body. And I don't think it's, I, I've noticed a lot of tense, tensity, um, tension in my shoulders. So I thought we would focus on the shoulders and also the hips in the brief amount of time that we have together. So next we'll practice crocodile. If you wanna come on to the belly, Flatten the belly to the mat, extend the legs out behind you, and we'll practice first on the right side. So extend the right arm out like half of a T. Yeah, and then bring the right cheek to the mat and kick the left leg up and over the right. So you're coming on to the outside edge of your body. And the left hand can be by your chest, you can go ahead and go for a half bind, grabbing for the back side of your shirt if that's interesting to you, or wrapping it all the way around you. And we'll be here for three minutes on this side as well. And yes, right side, my apologies. And perhaps utilizing this time right now to think about what you want your sankalpa to be. You set your sankalpa right away at the, the beginning of the guided meditation. And so there have definitely been classes where I kind of forgot and I was like, oh shit, I got to think of something really fast, um, which is okay. Like that can be a, a good practice to be thrown into the unexpected, but maybe listening to the body and trying to decide what you're trying to invite into your life. And in terms of Sankalpa, what you can set it for, um, there's a huge gamut of things you can set it for. It can be an energetic quality. I have abundance or I am assertive or it can be like I have $600 if you need it to be more material. Um, but also always checking like why? Why is it that I need $600 is because I want to feel more comfortable or at ease with my experience. So then maybe you would change it to I am secure or really it can be whatever resonates with you. I never want to be too suggestive. And we're at the halfway mark. Final minute.
And then gently roll the belly back onto the mat, coming to neutral. And we'll practice that on the other side. So go ahead and extend the left arm out and bring the left cheek to the mat. And kick the right leg behind you. And right hand can be by your face. You can tuck it behind you if you'd like, grabbing for the shirt. And the left arm, it might even be interesting to take like little micro movements situating where it might feel the most interesting in your body. And we'll be here for three minutes on this side as well. And suspending any expectations, judgments, criticizing, just allowing this to be what it is. I know when I first started practicing yoga, I had all these expectations about what I thought I was supposed to look like and like the molds I was supposed to fit into and knowing I've learned that you really, there is no mold you're trying to fit yourself into. So if you're feeling it, you're doing it. And we are at the halfway mark. And final minute. And flatten the belly back down to the earth. Bring the knees back down. Might feel good to bounce the legs a little bit. Maybe give yourself a little shimmy, shake that off. And press up into a tabletop, stacking the shoulders over the wrists, the hips over the knees. And come back into downward facing dog, sitting the hips high, the heels low. You can paddle out the feet if you'd like, bend one knee, the other knee. And from here, from here, we'll work into half pigeon. Inhale, lift the right leg up. And exhale, half pigeon, bringing right knee behind right wrist. Flatten the top of the left foot to the mat. And there's a lot of really good ways to take this posture. The ankle can absolutely be super close to the pelvis. The shin never has to be parallel to the front of the mat. And for the passivity, I definitely invite you to walk the forearms forward and bring the forehead to the mat. There's always the option of bringing a block under the right glute. And 
We're going to be here for four minutes on each side. And so remembering coming back to that second and coming back to the tenets. So meeting your edge, the first one. Like in a regular vinyasa class, you might be there for a minute and you could hold that. But maybe right now, giving yourself a little more leeway, knowing that we're going to be here for four minutes. Sustainability and time are the magic in a yin practice. And also, if you have any sensitivity in the knees or in the ankles, you can also take figure four on your back. Um, I can do a little quick, fast demo in case there's anyone that's wondering what that is right here. Bringing right ankle on top of left thigh. And this can be a good place to say, or you can interweave the fingers behind the thigh bone or interweave the fingers on top of the shin or let the foot rest down. It's another good option. And the hips can sometimes be an epicenter of emotion. So if you notice an intense sensation bubbling up or a memory or something, just knowing that that's a part of this practice when you're giving yourself this space to be still, sometimes when that's when that stuff is gonna come up. So if it is knowing that's normal, acknowledging it, trying to be there with it. And if you haven't centered in on what you'd like the sankalpa to be, this present tense intention, I am or I have statement, maybe bringing that to light now and filtering through what you would like for your practice today. And halfway. And final minute. You can press into your palms and walk the arms back towards the pelvis, tuck under the back toes, activate the back leg, and do any natural counter movement. If you want to press back into downward facing dog, take a scorpion dog, a three-legged dog, rock the hips out. Yeah, and you know what? Groaning means that you're doing it right. Bernie Clark encourages groaning in his yin classes. It's a sign of a good hold. So 
relishing the echo of the posture. And we'll move on to the other side. Inhale, the left leg lifts. And exhale, step it through. And arriving on this side and acknowledging it might not be the same on this side. On this side, you might need to flip over onto your back and take that figure four position. On this side, you might want to grab a block or a book if you have a book lying around or another yoga mat rolled up. You can put that under the left hip, walking the forearms forward. And arriving on this side. And this is the last hold we'll do before we seal out class. We'll do a gentle supine twist just to kind of neutralize the spine, bringing it back to equilibrium homeostasis. So you've got a good four minutes to really resolve what you'd like to set the intention to be if the mind wanders. And always knowing that the breath is a really good tool to utilize. You can even count the, the breaths. Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Or you can do a square breath, retaining at full and retaining at empty. Using whatever tools you have in your yoga Felt, if you will, right now, you can use a mantra. Each pose is like a little meditation. We're at the halfway mark. And final minute. Compress the palms into the ground, to the mat, activate your arms, tuck under the back toe, engage your back leg, coming back into a downward facing dog or a tabletop, 
and taking any organic movement that feels appropriate. You can bend one knee, the other knee, you can take a three-legged dog, a scorpion dog, you can flip the dog. And then we'll meet back in a neutral table and let the hips sink off to the left or the right side and we'll come to a seat with the legs out long in front of you. Now you can go that way. Yeah. And come to laying on your back. And we'll seal out class with a little bit of a twist here. So go ahead and hug the right knee in towards your chest. Give it a good squeeze, feel the compression. And you can roll the ankle one way, the other way. Let that feel good in the body. And if you want to eagle up the legs, you're more than welcome to add that in. But otherwise, with the left hand, guiding the right leg over towards the left side. And sending your right arm out like half of a T. Gentle supine twist. Gaze can be up, gaze can follow your fingertips. But really, in this posture, zeroing in on relaxing. If you have tension in the jaw, letting the jaw go, slackening there. Or if you're holding tension in the belly, or if you're holding tension in the shoulders, letting all of that go. And softening the muscles. And hug the right knee back in towards your chest. Give it a good squeeze. And then send the right leg out long. Switch the legs out, hug the left leg in this time. Feeling the compression there. You can oscillate the ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. Let that feel good. Let the compression of the knee coming towards the arm feel good. And then with the right arm, guide the left leg over towards the right. Left arm can go out like half of a T. Gaze can be up, it can be towards your fingertips. Giving this fine a gentle twist, a gentle rinse at the end here. And letting any tension that's still lingering, letting that dissolve, fall out of the frame of your consciousness. And hug the left knee back into your chest. Give it a good squeeze. And then bring the other knee in as well. So you're in like a cannonball shape or apanasana. And then go ahead and rock and roll up into a seat. And this is where we will take our brief break. If anybody wants to run to the bathroom really quick. Um, for Nidra, you can grab a blanket. If you want to drape a blanket over you, if you want to get kind of cozy, if you want to grab another sweatshirt, um, if you happen to have an eye pillow laying around, it might be a good time to utilize that. I do, yeah. <laughs> and... Yes, we will be back. Let's let's start at 8:10. It's 8:06 right now. So give everyone like 4 minutes to do some self-care, get some water, feed the cat, whatever it is. Cool, and everyone's good. Anybody have any questions or need anything? It's too dark. It's kind of dark. Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah, I like it. 
No. <laughs> blue. Yeah, do blue. blue. Yeah, that's better. Purple. Purple? Yeah. Yeah, blue sucks. Yeah, purple. Back on red. Okay. Yeah, Sweet. Okay, any last fidgets out? Adjusting your clothes, getting the blanket ready. Just make sure you feel comfortable. Yoga Nidra is practice in total stillness. In dreams, you have no control, but in Yoga Nidra, you create the dream. The body sleeps, but the mind remains awake. Give yourself some time to become calm and still. Take a deep breath and as you breathe in, feel calmness spreading throughout the whole body. And as you are breathing out, say to yourself, I'm going to practice yoga nidra and I will remain awake. Welcome a sense of relaxation into your physical body, becoming perfectly calm and still. Feel your feet relax, your legs, your torso, your shoulders, arms, hands, let it all relax. Let the head be heavy and release any tension you might be holding in your face, letting the jaw slacken and taking in the natural breath the rise and the fall of the belly as your body breathes in and out. Yoga Nidra begins now. Now is the time to set your sankalpa, your resolve. Please state your resolve clearly three times with feeling and emphasis. Anamaya Kosha, awareness of parts of the body. Now I will guide you through the different parts of your physical body. One by one, I will take your consciousness to each and every part of your physical body. At the same time, you will visualize each part. Go along with me at the same speed. I will move from one part to another and you will follow along with your awareness. The practice always begins with the right hand. Right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth, fifth, palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, Heel, top of the foot, sole of the foot, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth, fifth. Now go to the left side. Become aware of the left hand. Left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth, fifth. Palm of the hand, back of the hand wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, waist, hip, thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, top of the foot, sole of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth, fifth. Now go to the front of the body. Go to the front of the body and go to the top of the head. Top of the head, 
forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, the space between the eyebrows, right eyelid, left eyelid, right eye, left eye, right ear, left ear, right cheek, left cheek, nose, tip of the nose, right nostril, left nostril, upper lip, lower lip, chin, jaw, throat, right collarbone, left collarbone, right chest, left chest, middle of the chest, navel, upper abdomen, lower abdomen, right groin, left groin, right thigh, left thigh, right knee, left knee, right ankle, left ankle, right toes, left toes. Now go to the back, go to the back of the body, right toes, left toes, right sole, left sole, right heel, left heel, right ankle, left ankle, right calf muscle, left calf muscle, back of the right knee, back of the left knee, back of the right thigh, back of the left thigh, right buttock, left buttock, right hip, left hip, whole spine, right shoulder blade, left shoulder blade, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head. See the whole physical form lying on the floor as though you are standing outside the body. Become aware of the meeting points between the floor and the physical body. Become aware of the parts of your whole physical body absorbing energy from the floor. Be aware of the front part of your body deriving prana or life force from the air. Feel the vibrations of prana moving through your body. As a result of this practice, the physical body has become completely quiet. Become aware of the environment surrounding you. Experience tranquility, peace, and quiet. Become aware of the whole environment and the whole body. The whole body. The whole body together. No sleeping, please. Please do not sleep. This is the secret of Yoga Nidra. In the practice of Yoga Nidra, you are neither sleeping nor awake, but somewhere in between. Pranamaya Kosha. Now bring your awareness to the breath. Draw your attention to the natural breath. Feel fresh oxygen enter through the nostrils and then leave as CO2. With each inhale, feel your belly, diaphragm, chest all rise. And with each exhale, let the belly slowly deflate. The spontaneous breath enters through the nostril openings, moves upwards, and draws together to form a triangle with its apex in the eyebrow center. Become aware of the breath passing through both nostrils. In yoga, we say the left nostril breath is cooler, it's more lunar, it's more receptive, more yin. And the right breath is warmer, it's more solar, more active. See if you can sense both sides. Now begin to count your breathing backwards as follows. Inhale 54, exhale 54, inhale 53, Exhale, 53. And so on until you get to zero or until I ask you to stop. Total awareness of counting and breathing. Continue. No sleeping, please.
Madhamaya Kosha. Now try to experience heaviness in the physical body. The body is becoming heavier and heavier. It has become so heavy that you're unable to move any one part. You're unable to raise even an eyelid. You're not even able to wiggle the toes or fingers. The body has become so heavy. You feel like you're sinking into the floor. Now experience the sensation of lightness throughout the body. Not heaviness, but lightness. Feel the body becoming lighter and lighter and lighter as if it's completely weightless. The body is so light, as light as a feather. When your body becomes weightless, you feel as if it's rising from the floor, as if your whole body is drifting up to the ceiling, floating. Now imagine the feeling of timidness. Imagine feeling apprehensive and cowardly. You lack in courage and are easily frightened. You are very nervous and afraid, almost paralyzed into inertia. Change the experience. Awaken the idea of assertiveness. Gradually feel yourself becoming more bold, self-assured, and decisive. Imagine being very forceful and confident in how you convey yourself. You are brimming with confidence and are determined, assertive. Things will go your way. Vinyana Maya Kosha and Ananda Maya Kosha. Withdraw your mind and please bring your awareness back to Chitta Kasha. Chitta Kasha is the dark space you see behind your closed eyes. Develop your awareness of this space an infinite space that extends as far as you can see. Become totally aware of this space, but not involved. Observe it as if you're watching a movie. What you see is a projection of your subconscious. Continue. Now ask yourself, what am I thinking? Do not think, but just notice the spontaneous thought process. Hear the thoughts without thinking the thoughts. Just let them come and go, passing through the frame of your consciousness. Continue to listen to thoughts. No controlling, no trying. Whatever is expressed, simply allow it. Now stop the spontaneous thoughts, reject the thoughts, and create a thought at will. Choose a thought and think it on purpose. Choose a thought and think it clearly. Continue. Bring your awareness to the present and make sure that you are not sleeping. No sleeping, please. I'm going to name a few objects and you should visualize them on the levels of feeling, awareness, emotion, and imagination as best you can. The practice of visualization develops self-awareness and relaxes the mind. You should move as fast as I go, jumping your mind from one object to the next. Do not concentrate on any one image, but just keep moving along with the practice. Pink rose, barrel of acorns, lily pad, honeybee, mountain range with snow-capped peaks, rose quartz, playground, light post, farmer's market, waterfall, constellations, door slamming, animal stretching, 
photo booth, log cabin, dark cave, cherry blossom, a pine tree in an open field, rocky beach, feathers ruffling, crisp apple, book, thunder, cactus, tulip fields, creaky floorboard, cavernous canyon, huckleberries, canoe, tree swing, brick wall, candlelight. I am now going to list a few objects to invoke certain sounds. Hear them on the levels of feeling, imagination, tone, vibration, and resonance as best you can. Old muffler, wind howling, soda can opening, hands rubbing together, cannonball splash, Velcro, videotape rewinding, fire crackling, teeth chattering, tea kettle, dial up, cat purring, dial tone, dog sniffing, an empty room, ocean waves, imagine darkness, visualize the sounds of soft waves rolling in and out with the tide, imagine seeing yourself sitting in a circle, the circumference of the circle is made up of lit candles. Are the candles all of the same size, color? Are they in glass containers, candelabras, or freeform melting everywhere? The candles' little flames flicker and dance. Imagine sitting in the center of the circle, swathed in warm, loose clothing. You are examining an ancient scroll. It is long and in depth. To see the full illustration, you place two weights on it to firmly hold it down. Examine the scroll. Notice the colors, shapes, or patterns that stand out to you. Does it tell a story? Continue surveying the scroll. Now visualize two tiny old sages on the scroll, one wearing a soft light blue and the other dusty pink. They are actively pointing to a room resembling a library, intricately drawn on the scroll. Acknowledge to them that you've received this message. And brush your hand over the scroll. And if you were seated, stand up and walk away towards the edge of the candlelit circle. As you look out beyond, you see concentric circles created by more and more candles. There is an extremely shallow pond, only an inch or two at your feet. The reflection from the candle shines brightly on the water's surface. It goes on as far as the eye can see, like a maze of candles, an infinity room of candles. Slide on your rain boots and start to wade through the maze of lights. The colors you're absorbing are either bright light from the candles, darkness, or blue. All shades of blue, dark and light, like you're observing all this through a blue lens. Continue walking. You arrive at a massive candle. It's twice your height. It illuminates a dark void, a dark space. You're uncertain what lies through the hole, but your intuition nudges you forward. Take your first steps into the mystery, yielding to the greater power at forest here, allowing that what will happen to conspire. Walk out of the darkness and into a brightly lit hallway. It's like a hallway from an ancient French castle or an old European church with marble floors. 
The sun is out. There are warm yellows, beiges. You also notice an archway leading into a room. Head in that direction. And as you do, you walk over a grate and a little spray, like straight out of a Studio Ghibli film, chippers and hands you a piece of parchment. Reach for the parchment, open it up. What does it say? Read the words. Remember these words. Continue walking through the archway and into a library. What does the library consist of? Volumes of encyclopedias, leather bound poetry, rare vinyl, fascinating test studies, movie scores. Take a moment to rummage through what you have discovered. Continue. Indulge in this knowledge. Relish in any moments of pleasure that might accompany this discovery. There's a green couch in the back room cloaked in gossamer thin curtains. Pull back the curtains and in the center is a painting hung in a gold frame. Who or what is the painting of? Place the parchment you received into the painting. Nestle it amongst the scenery or let a person take it into their hands. The painting swings open to reveal a hidden door with a round brass knocker. Knock three times. One, two, three. There is a sudden rumbling in the floor. The chandelier in the library clanks together like wind chimes on a blustery day. The room stills. There is silence. Take a moment to scan your body starting at the tips of your toes, running up your legs to the pelvic floor and the base of your spine. Like a gravitational field, feel the magnetism of the earth keeping you secure. Descend deeply into the vehicle that is your body. Feel it, nourish it, validate it, assert yourself fully. Move your awareness to the lower abdomen. Feel water ebb and flow over your abdomen like the tide. Connect to your emotions. Give yourself permission to sense, to indulge, to enjoy, to taste sweetness. Send your awareness to the solar plexus, the navel. To ignite a sense of fire, radiance, determination, strength of will, a power stoked from within. And shift your attention to the heart and lungs where oxygen circulates. Find a sense of balance here, equilibrium. This is the center of compassion, healing, and love. Now send your awareness to the throat. How can you express, create, and communicate what you felt in the heart? What method of vibration and resonance suits you? Send your awareness to your third eye. This is the seat of your intuition, imagination, a place of clear vision. What do you see? What do you hear? Take notes of these textures and sensations. Now to the crown of the head, top of the head. How can you connect with the collective? What information is being presented to you to download? Come back to standing in front of the picture. The hidden door creaks open to reveal the vision of your sankalpa. The very essence of your intention. It might be a scene playing out in front of you, a quality or sensation that you embody or simply the words of your sankalpa written clearly and neatly in front of you. Repeat your sankalpa three more times here.
Develop your awareness of this room. Without opening your eyes, visualize the four walls, the ceiling, and your body lying comfortably on the floor in perfect stillness. Notice your physical body. What sensations grab your attention? The body is always changing. It is not the same body you had as a child. It is not even the same body you started this practice in. You are not this body. You are the awareness of this body. Now notice your mood, how you feel. You may have many emotions, but you are not these fleeting feelings. You are the awareness of each mood that passes. And next, notice your thoughts, the tone of your narrative. Know that you are not your thoughts and you can choose to not identify with what the mind thinks. To know that the entire universe is a projection of our own being is to know that we create within ourselves the color and shape of all that exists. You can invite subtle movement back into the fingers, a little micro movement wiggling into the toes. Extend the arms above you like you would stretching in the morning and hug the knees in towards your chest. And you can choose to roll over onto either side, left for more lunar qualities, right for more sol solar qualities. And extending gratitude to yourself for paying attention to your deepest layer of self and for strengthening your ability to creatively visualize and for doing the work, planting the seeds of your intention into your subconscious. Yoga Nidra is complete. You can gently press yourself up to a seat. And keep the eyes closed. And we can seal out class together with three ohms. I'm not gonna lie, my feet totally fell asleep. Jumped in. Okay. Um, if you want, I can unmute you. And if you would like to join me in three final ohms together, I would love that. Um, I'm gonna get you all in gallery view so I can see you. Cool. And we'll take a couple clearing breaths. Inhale in through the nose. And exhale out through the mouth, H-A. Inhale in through the nose. And exhale, H-A. This time prepare for OM. Inhale. Inhale, breathe in, and exhale, let the breath go. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm really glad that we can still practice together in this virtual way. So thank you for coming to Posers. And if you would like to contribute for a don donation, um, 
I'm going to enter my Venmo information. If you ever have any questions for me, please reach out via the chat or you can re reach out on Instagram, GR3TA Rose. Um, my Venmo, I'll put in the chat. It's Greta, G R E T A H E L L E R. And Posers has always been donation based. Be what you can, suggest a donation 10 to 25. Um, yeah, and let me know if you have any questions about class or any feedback. I'm always happy to hear it. Hear it. Every class is different and it always unfolds in a different way. Um, so good to see you all. Robin and Neve and Aaron and Jessa, thank you so much for being here. Mary and Samantha and um, I think it's Kevin, right, Kleinemann. Um, thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening and I hope to see you all very soon. David teaches this class the rest of the month and I teach the first Sunday of every month. So thank you so much. Thanks, Greta. Thank you, Greta. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.